Now let us understand how globalization has been advantageous to both producers as well as to the consumers in India. First to the producers. Now several of the top Indian companies have been able to benefit from the increased competition because they have invested in newer technology and production methods and thereby raise their production standards. Second, they have collaborated with foreign companies. So what happened? They have gained from successful collaborations with foreign companies. Next, globalization has also helped in the development of IT sector. So we can say that good quality products are being produced at lower price. On the other hand, when we look at the consumers, there is a greater choice before the consumers who can enjoy improved quality and lower price for several products. People today enjoy much higher standard of living than what was possible earlier. Now we have seen that MNC develops with the help of foreign trade. Okay, so in order to develop foreign trade, SCZs are developed. SCZ is the special economic zones. Now special economic zones are set up by the central and the state government. These are developed with world class facilities like the availability of electricity, water, roads, transport, storage, recreational and educational facilities. What are the features of special economic zone? First of all, the companies who set up production units in the special economic zone, that is in that area, they do not have to pay taxes for an initial period of five years. So they are given tax holiday for the first five years. Next one, the government has also allowed flexibility in labor laws. This is in order to attract foreign investment. And this also reduces the cost of labor for the company. Now, third, these SEZs are set up mainly to attract foreign investment. That is foreign companies to invest in India. If we look at India before 1991, the scenario was different. It was difficult to start a new business. The reason is one has to undergo or one has to get many licenses to start a business and that was very difficult. Second, we did not have enough capital and foreign direct investment was not allowed. There were restrictions on import as well as export. But after 1991, India has come up with new economic policy. And this new economic policy can be put in three words, LPG. That is liberalization, privatization and globalization. Liberalization refers to removal of restrictions. That is earlier if the company had to buy 10 licenses to start a business, now only two are required. So these permissions or licenses were a kind of barrier that is obstacle. So they were removed or I will say reduced. Second one is privatization. Earlier, if you want to get a telephone line, it was only BSNL and MTNL. But today, because of privatization, we have so many other companies providing telephone services and getting a telephone connection is so easy. Similarly, airlines. Earlier, it was only Indian Airlines and Air India. Now, there are so many private airlines and the prices of the airfare has come down. Similarly, if I go for the television, we had only Doordarshan. But today, because of privatization, there are so many other private channels. So these were the benefits of privatization. Then globalization, already we have learned the advantages. So if I sum up the first one, the government decided that time has come for the Indian producers to compete with producers around the world. And that is the reason LPG was introduced. It felt that competition would improve the performance of producers within the country since they would have to improve their quality in order to sell in the world market. Third is this would benefit consumers who would have more variety of goods to choose from. Fourth, this decision was also supported by 
powerful international organizations like WTO, that is World Trade Organizations. Of course, the intention was competition. But what happened is many of the industrial units in our country, instead of getting into the competition, they closed their industries because they could not compete. And they started buying Chinese products or product from some other country and started selling in India. But LPG has definitely benefited the country immensely. Let us understand World Trade Organization. The World Trade Organization is an international organization established to supervise and liberalize world trade. The World Trade Organization, it was commenced on 1st January 1995. India has been the member of WTO since its beginning, that is inception. What does this WTO do? The main function of WTO is it encourages international trade through removal of trade barriers like import duties and import quotas. On the other hand, the negative side of the World Trade Organization is, we can say the first one, it has pressurized developing countries like India to follow its policy. But on the other hand, it has turned a blind eye to trade barriers and protection policies practiced by prosperous regions like US and EU. For example, the US farmer receives massive sum of money from the US government for production and for export to other countries. Let us understand this. Supposing an Indian farmer and a US farmer, both are cultivating wheat. The Indian farmer can sell the wheat at say 40 rupees kg. On the other hand, for a US farmer, the price of the wheat comes to 70 rupees per cage. Now, US farmer can never sell wheat in the international market because the Indian wheat is much cheaper. Now, what the US government does is it gives subsidies to the US farmer. That is, it compensates the US farmer. So, the farmer is able to sell the same wheat for 35 rupees per kg rest of the money is given to him by the government. So we say that the US farmers receive massive sum of money from the US government for production and for export to other countries. Now this is adversely affecting Indian farmers and also the farmers from the developing countries. So there is a struggle for fair globalization. We can say that everyone has not been benefited from globalization. So the people who are benefited are people with education. Second is the skill. Third, the big companies. Because they have made the best use of new opportunities. Developed countries have benefited more than the developing countries. So a fair globalization would create opportunities for all and also ensure that benefits of globalization are shared better. Now, how to make globalization more fair? First thing is align with other developing countries. All developing countries have to come together and voice their grievances to the WTO. So we can say align with the developing countries with similar interests to fight against the domination of developed countries in the WTO. Government can use trade and investment barriers, ensure that labor laws are properly implemented and workers get their right. Because even the benefit of globalization has to go to the people who are working. Support small producers to improve their performances till the time they become strong enough to compete. Next, make policies that protect the interests of all the people in the country, whether it is rich or poor. Then it is negotiated at the WTO for fairer rules. Thank you.